Oh, okay, got it. Hello, and welcome to Jason Cavanis Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cavanis. Our guest today is Mari Pittman. Mari, are you ready to be great today? I'm doing great. How are you? Let's get it. I'm great, yes. Mari Pittman is a dad, personal trainer, team maker, and entrepreneur. For over 20 years, Mari has supported and assisted others in their personal fitness and life journeys. His commitment to his clients runs deep, deep and is only surpassed by his commitment and dedication to his boys. 13-year-old Gavin and 11-year-old Tyler. So, Mari, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank um, you. So, right off the bat, you have this tea company called Mari's Hive Tea. And on, yep. on your website, you said you reinvented the tea bag. How, how, right. how does that, like, how do you reinvent a tea bag, right? Isn't that like a hundreds of year old tradition? Like, how do you reinvent a tea bag? Talk about how that works, how, how that okay. came about. Okay, good question, good question. Um, well, when we first started out, um, you know, I wasn't a huge green tea drinker. I dibble and dabbed with the, with the black tea because of energy. Um, being a personal trainer and former nutritionist, I knew the benefits of drinking um, a tea. Uh, and by reinventing the tea bag, I mean, you know, tea bag comes with, you know, just tea in it, you know, whether it be any type of, um, you know, green, black, gray tea, oolong, you know, just different numbers of teas. But what we did was we literally added a physical sweetener to the tea bag, which has never been done. Uh, you have uh, products where they maybe spray on a type of, um, you know, sweetener, but never a physical sweetener. We added granulated honey and, uh, you know, you know, there's so many different tea brands out there. So I get asked quite often, you know, what's the, you know, what makes your tea brand so, you know, so much different. And I just say, look, I said, we add whole leaf tea, which are loose leaf tea, which most brands don't use because it's, it's a pretty expensive, you know, Lipton and um, Tetley, they use that really fine grinded wind up tea with very limited taste, but we use, we use a whole leaf and we add um, a certain amount of granulated honey in our tea bag and it just took off from there. Uh, you know, it, it was funny when I first started out, um, again, it was, I tried to explain to people as a personal trainer now, trying to push tea on, you know, I, and it was funny, it was all in-house. Now I worked at New York Sports Club for about 10 years and that's when I got started with the product. So I use all the clients, my own clients, as guinea pigs and, um, you know, it, it caught on and, you know, here we are today. So it took a long time though. That's the thing. It, it took a good while. I almost want to tell a few times, but uh, uh, I knew we had some, yeah. That, you still do your personal fitness training too for, for your clients? Yes, yes. yes. So yes, basically yes. You, have, you have, you have two, two jobs, so to speak, right? The first person and full, the team. That's right. Two full-time jobs. I can't give up training until, I mean, I've, actually let, you know, some of my clients go so I can, you know, put more time into Maury's high tea, but, you know, still, I got to bring home the bacon on a regular basis. So right now I'm my own, you know, my own boss. I freelance, you know, I go, I do mostly in homes. Uh, I do some gyms, but mostly in homes. That's what the money is. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I love this work. You know, I love working with people. I've been doing it for a long time, but, you know, I'm getting older now. Um, and, uh, you know, with a child, you know, a child with serious disabilities, um, it's not going to fit the bill, you know, the next 10 years or so. Like I said, I'm not young by any means, not old, but I'm not young. So um, I think Maury's, Maury's high tea can really get me over that hump. You know, my boys are everything to me. Um, my youngest, Tyler, we, you know, we talked about his disability. Real, you mentioned it really quick. Um, you know, these, they're, they're, they're my heart and soul. Um, they, they're, they were the main reasons why I never threw in a towel, you know, because I knew I had something special. And, uh, you know, throughout all the, we had a, uh, my partner, my, my partner, Melanie Smith, before my investors came on, you know, we were grinding it out for eight years. You know, we, it was, it was challenging to say the least, you know, we, we knew we had something special, but again, my motivation was my boys. Um, yeah, I know I, I see myself, you know, making a good future doing this, making a good amount of money, but, you know, I need to take care of my boys. That's my heart and soul. So, so Mark, I want to go, go back on something real fast. Can you yes. talk about the, the, the eight years? Like, I think a lot of entrepreneurs join like entrepreneur journey now that they, they, they have this mindset because they see, you know, Silicon Valley on TV. They see Mark Zuckerberg. They see all the Steve mm -hmm. Jobs stories. They, mm -hmm. You know, they think it's like you, you wake up, have an idea. Six months later, you have a fry, right? I mean, you've no. been doing this for eight years, right? And like- Oh, no, longer, longer, longer. 12 years I've been doing it, yeah, 12, 12 years. years. And you're 12 doing years. well, yes. but it's not like you're like, you're like, you're, you know, like you're like famous or a billionaire, no. right? Can you no, talk about no. like the journey, like the eight year journey you've been on? Absolutely. Well, you know, once we, you know, you know, you start obviously when you uh, have a new product, you have to get your business license. And so we, you know, we had a, you know, we actually took on investors prior to this, but they didn't really do too much for us, but they did help us get started as far as the paperwork and filing for, you know, our, our trademark and all that things. That was all, you know, that's still easy, easy stuff. And the hard part is, 
getting your product out there to people who already have their minds made up on what they like. You know, for instance, you know, we have a lot of people out there who, for instance, don't don't bother, they won't bother, you know, with tea with any sweetener at all, which is fine. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there who do love, you know, tea with honey because of the benefits and everything. But when we first started out, you know, to get, you know, we got lucky. Um, we went, we stuck, we went to our very first store and said, hey, yeah, we like this. Come set up and do a sample. So that that's how we first started. That was about 10 years ago. Um, and then we started doing samples. And then I, you know, as a trainer at New York Sports Club, I was making 500 bags a week, up to, up to 500 bags a week on orders. I would bring them in and they would go. So I knew we were on to something. So I supplied a lot of my, um, actually a lot, of it, a lot of it was in home. I'm gonna try to, I don't want to be tongue tied here. A lot of people from the gym supported me at first. You know, they were, look, we, we love what you're doing. So I, you know, I had about maybe 25, 30 people from the gym by itself going to buy the product. Um, and then the biggest thing is, is advertising. When you have no money or marketing, when you have no money, pretty much everything's word of mouth. You know, it's it's tough. I mean, and you know, when I say I was doing the towel a few times, I mean, there were nights I woke up or nights I went to sleep crying because I knew we had something special. But, you know, we tried to get loans from the banks. We tried, um, we tried um, grants from the government, which is a complete joke, in my opinion. Yeah, sometimes um, people say like go to small business ministries, get a loan. I'm like, they, that, that should really mean that no no chance at all get a loan unless you have like, only way to get a loan from then if you don't need a loan, right? Well, it was, yeah, exactly. It's a catch 22. We, okay, well, how much capital do you have? You have to have at least 30,000 capital in order to get, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So, um, you know, with the banks, we, we had basically gave up on the banks. We knew from day one, it's, you know, in particular after the 2008 um, economy, you know, took a hit. Well, the banks really clamped down on giving out money. Um, in fact, I had a conversation with uh, a former, uh, my former bank, which was Wells Fargo, um, and they said to me, "I said, are you guys, uh, do you guys offer any grants, you know, for small business?" And the lady looked me right in the face and said, "No, our, we're into bringing in money, not giving out money at this point." So it, it was, it was a stark contrast. I mean, it woke me up to say, you know what, you know, just back off and go find means, of, you know, elsewhere. Uh, but marketing, obviously you need a good marketing, but you, you know, you need to get your product out there. And we did not have that in the beginning. So we crawled, literally crawled before we walked. You know, we, I think before our partners came on, we probably had about 15 stores. And I would say probably in that, before my partners came on, we, you know, we were probably averaging maybe two orders a month, you know, but you know, that was something to us because, you know, if we knew that if, we, if this could catch on, it could really grow. So, um, but to all those who have to, who, you know, trying to start a business, you can't give up. And, 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 you know, I want to talk to you about that as well. You know, when you, you look at the world today, if you have an idea, guys, take a chance because, you know, the world we live in today, and, and again, I don't want to talk politics too much, but you know, the rich keep getting richer and, you know, the, the rest of us are left fending for ourselves. So, you know, you, I, you look at situation with a lot of people not wanting to go back to work after the pandemic, I get it, you know, and some of these people have ideas. You know, I have about a good eight to 10 friends who are waiting to get on as well. So uh, most of them people of color. So my, my thing to them is if I can pull this off, I'm coming back to pull you guys up, you know, um, because no one else is giving us help at all. It's, it's, a tough, it's a tough situation out there right now. But my advice to, you know, the, the wannabe entrepreneurs, it's, it's, you know, waking up six months later and ha you know, make, having a million dollars in your bank account is an absolute fallacy. It, it's not going to work. You have to put the time in. You have to do your research on no matter what you're doing, you know, and then, and the most important thing is you have to believe in what you're doing, believe in your product. Um, Maury's Hive Tea basically sells itself. Once people try our product, they like it. So, um, I, you know, it's not like I have to you know, twist and turn, jump through hoops, to, you know, people to like my product. Again, once you try it, we pretty much have them sold. So, it's, you know, excuse my friends, some, some good shit we have <laughs> out there right now. And it's, and it's catching on and, um, uh, you know, like I said, it's 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 scary. I tell my partner Mel all the time. I said, look, I said, you know, I said, there's no turning back once we, you know, go down this this, this route. I said because uh, it could blow up. And me being the face of the product, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have a problem speaking in front of people. Um, you know, as a trainer, I did, you know, I did classes for years. You know, 20, 25 people controlling the class, and you know, in these small groups, uh, group areas. Um, so I was always comfortable with, you know, pre presenting myself in front of people. You know, I've always tried to take care of myself um, mentally and physically. Um, you know, I'm not young. Uh, I'm going to put it out there. I'm 54. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I can hang with the, the 35 year olds, you know, so to speak. Um, so, but, so Maureen, you know, I, I, talk about yeah. this real fast. Like, you know, a lot of people think, you know, like your people in the forties, fifties, put out to retire, get a rocking chair out. But like me personally, I'm 53. I have so much fire focus in my belly. Right. Like I could imagine like retiring, right. Like can you talk about how to have like this fire in your belly, so to speak, and like still wanted to like do stuff out of value, like just like kick ass, so to speak. That's right. Well, you know, for me, you know, for me, it's, um, <laughs> I've always had a lot of energy, you know, um, it's funny when I graduated college, I did a, uh, um, a, uh, uh, internship. And I remember doing the internship and sitting here, sitting there, you know, I, at the time, you know, just graduated college, I was into martial arts, not yet a personal trainer, but I was getting there, heading toward that direction. And I remember sitting in that office for eight hours, looking at that clock. And I said, you know what? I can't do this. I cannot do this. You know, I graduated with a business management degree. Um, and I said, you know what? I got to get out there. I'm, I'm, I'm antsy. I, you know, I've always had a lot of energy. You know, I've always, like I said, I love, I lived in the gym. I started doing push-ups at 13 and I haven't looked back since. You know, um, I love to work out. I love to take care of myself. I love to help other people out. Um, and I got to say, working out, and this, I know this is a cliche, sounds cliche, but, you know, working out, taking care of yourself, you know, uh, you know, getting old can wait for me. You know, um, I, like I said, I, I had my first child at 40. So, so you can imagine. Um, so I took it upon myself to, you know, for them mainly to, you know, keep myself fit, you know, my mind straight, um, you know, not a heavy, you know, I don't drink a lot. Um, just, you know, and again, I love, I have a lot of passion for helping other people take care of themselves. The results are, you know, I, and believe it or not, you know, I keep all of my, uh, all the people that I've met to help me get my business started were all in-house clients from that I met, you know, previously or, you know, uh, former clients and present, you know, whether it be lawyers, whether it be, you know, graphic design artists, whether it be, you know, uh, I mean, you name it, whoever I stayed with in-house, I'd have to search far to get things done as far as getting Maury's high tea off the ground. But, you know, as far as energy, you guys, I mean, taking care of yourself is key, you know, physically taking care of yourself. You know, like I said, I'm 54 years old and, you know, like I said, getting old can wait. Um, I have a lot of energy. Um, you know, I work out four to five times a week. Although I am coming off a um, rotator cuff surgery, injury, uh, surgery, I just had it about almost four months ago. Um, but I'm coming back from that. My range of motion, you can see that. I can move my arms, guys. That was tough. That was, that was challenging for the first couple of months, you know, not being able to do anything, um, you know, because I'm not used to that. I'm used to being active, you know. Whether, you know so um, <laughs> I, w I went back into the gym after about a month and a half of having surgery and worked the rest of my body because I could not sit on my ass and do nothing. I'm just too antsy. But you know, I tell people, you know, it's, you know, you know, the older you get in your 40s, you know, 50s, yeah, most people start to slow down, but, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you know, if you take care of yourself, you, eat, uh, you, you know, eat right, take care of yourself physically. Like I said, I know people, no, most people are not going to live in a gym like I do. But uh, if you can get out there average two to three times a week and, you know, get a meaningful workout in every time you go in, um, you're going to benefit from that. And, you know, like, like I said, my boys, my everything. So I have to stay in tip top shape in order to, to make, you know, make sure to push this thing through to make sure that it happens. Yeah, so, I, I had the same surgery a couple of years ago on my right shoulder. I, I, uh, I know, uh, yeah, I know exactly what we went through. Yeah, well, it's not it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant at all. Oh, no, it's no, it's not. And I've had, you know, it's funny. I had, you know, this is uh, my rotator cuff surgery is my fifth surgery. <laughs> you know, I had sh uh, shoulder surgery on my left side, knee surgery, hip surgery, elbow surgery. But by far, that was the worst to come back from. Mentally, you know, you're sitting there, you're like, you know, you can't move my dominant hand at that. You know, so my left hand's got, you know, has to do everything to the yeah. point to where that even started hurting. So it's definitely a it's, mind it's all, shift. It's, it's, it's a mental fuck, literally, <laughs> excuse my French. But yeah, but, That's you know, funny. again, I, I knew that once I, uh, I had to stick with it, I had some, a great support group, my partner, Melanie, who's wonderful. She, you know, she picked up slack for Maury's Hive Tea while I was down and out. And that's the thing, you know, that's another thing. If you're going to have, you know, partners, you know, you and your partner's going to have to be on the same page. You know, um, you know, Melanie picked, you know, my, my youngest son, who's, you know, has severe epilepsy. You know, I, there were times when I had to be called because he would just have a grand mal seizure and have to be rushed to the hospital. And I would be called from work or whatever to meet him at the hospital. But well, Melanie took over the fort and ran the machine while things went while I was down. So, and I was fortunate to have her in my life because, again, without her, I would not be here today. And, you know, when, when Greg and those guys first came on as, as, um, as uh, investors, you know, although my, you know, it's my product and my name's on it, 
you know, Melanie was there from day one. I said, look, guys, I said, you can't exclude this woman. And now Greg gets it, <laughs> you know, because now, you know, with the three, you know, it's a, we're, we're a three-man team right now. And Melanie, would, I would say Melanie carries, you know, me, me being the face of the product, you know, she makes the product, she deals with all the people, the shipping, the stores, that's all her, you know, and you can't, you know, you can't run a business by yourself. So you need good people. And like I said, I was fortunate enough to have her on my side. And to this day, you know, she's great with my boys. You know, I couldn't ask for a better person to be around. Um, you know, we're going to grow this business together. And, you know, I want to make sure that she's well taken care of as well. So, you know, then, you know, you know, those entrepreneurs, you can't do it by yourself. You're going to have to have, you know, uh, meaningful people who can pick up the slack and that you can trust because, you know, again, um, you're running a business here and it, it can go south in a second, if, you know, if you're not prepared. So. So Mari, back to entrepreneurial challenges and, and, and talk about this. Like, you know, you start the company, there's so much set of problems you got to do. And then talk about how, like, you, you raise some seed investment. A lot of people say, oh, man, I raised X amount of money. I'm successful. I'm doing good. But actually, there's yeah. a whole new set of problems and challenges, right? Because now you got to actually, before you're thinking, you got to, like, you had a plan to perform. Now you actually got to perform, right? You got to make shit happen because people's money are invested in your company. Talk about how that's a new that's set right. of problems. Damn right. <laughs> well, again, that's just more added pressure. But again, um, before my, my partners came on, I mean, I, you know, they, I'm not, you know, I was, we were used to working hard, you know, you know, having two jobs, you know, you know, juggling, you know, two children, um, one was, you know, like I said, one with severe dis disabilities. Um, so it, it, it's a struggle, but, uh, you know, be before, like I said, before the guys came on, we were, we were hustling. When they came on, basically what it did was, it gave us a kick in the ass is what it did. It, it gave us that little extra motivation to say, okay, we have people who are not riding on us, who believe on us, who are investing their hard earned money, let's go out there and produce. So our, my partner, Greg, who kind of set up a format for us as far as a business, a new business plan, because of course I had my own business plan before they came on. And you know, we, we decided, look, you know, let's take on roles and we all have to be responsible for those roles. For instance, you know, like I said, I'm the face of the program. So I'm doing the interviews, I'm going to the stores, I'm meeting all the, the managers and owners and you know, trying to pitch my product. And then you have Mel who you know, is making the tea and, 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 and dealing with the customers and making sure that everything gets out on time. And, um, and then you have Greg on the other, on the, other, you know, on the uh, back end who's handling, handling all of the money and the finances. And so it all has to come together. Um, but like I said, we're only a three man team. I'm sure we're gonna grow as our business grows, but you know, now that we have investors, like I said, once they came aboard, I didn't feel like I had anything to prove because we were already out there, but we, now we had the means to have a, a further reach. So by going, you know, having, you know, you know, an extra $50,000 capital, as opposed to only having two grand in the bank, is a big difference. You know, and, all, and then plus it's all how you spend your money. So we, you know, we spend our money wisely. You know, I was, like I said, I was on the road uh, last year, to give an example. Um, we, we went to 250 stores in four months. Well, I did. I went to 250 stores in four months and ending up getting 50 accounts. And that doesn't sound like much, but you know, you're looking at a 20%, a little less than that ratio, which is you know, great because uh, Cisco, we went to Cisco and they said, oh, well, how many stores you have before we went out? We said, we have about 15, 20 stores. Well, we need you to do a little bit more than that. And then you guys can come back to us to prove that you guys can get your product in the stores. So we did that and I went out there pounding the pavement and it wasn't, you know, you're being told 90% or not 90, but a lot of, you know, nah, we're good or, you know, we'll, you know, we have enough teas or they just didn't understand our product. But you know, again, pound the pavement. And again, what I did was during that pandemic, believe it or not, 2020 was our best year. <laughs> Most people had the worst year, but for, for Maurice High Tea, it was our best year as far as growth. The, you know, like I said, the last four months of last year, I got out there and I was like, you know what? I'm motivated. I have a backing. I have a tank full of gas. Let's get out there and so, let's go get it. And I went out there with the, with the mask on and everything. And, you know, people, they, they, they jumped on it. So, and, and not only that, but we're getting, you know, they're following up. They're running out and we're reaching out and we need more. And that's how you grow your business. So, Mari, so, you, you yeah. said earlier before you said you had, you had your own business plan, but the new two people and had it, and they did a new, 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 new business plan for you. Can you talk yes. about the points of like being humble, being open to ideas as a CEO? Like, you know, a lot of people like, this is my idea. No one can change it. This is it, nothing else. But, can you talk yeah. about, no, maybe, maybe there's people out there smaller than you who can make your, make your business better, right? Right, right. Well, you know, before my, my partners actually came along, I knew that. I knew that you're going you're gonna to have to give up something. 
you know, and that, that I think the hardest part was, uh, Jason, was giving up um, as much, you know, you know it's like if someone said to me, it's better to own, you know, 90% uh, or I'm sorry, it's better to own 30% of a $10 million business as opposed to 90% of a $100,000 business. Yeah. So my, my biggest, you know, shell shock was giving out all that percentage to a few people who just put in a few dollars. But I get it. It took a second to really, you know, to to clamp on. I mean, I even, I mean, I'm an investor in my own business as well. I put my own money in as well. So, um, but you know, you have, you have to have that understanding that you've got to be able to, you have to let some of it go. One thing I would not let them do is change my ingredients. That was not going to be touched. So before we signed anything, we said, look, you know, we can change the packaging. We can do different things, but as far as Maury's Hive Tea and how we have it set up, I do not want that touched. And they agreed. They said, look, you know, we can, you know, my partner, Greg, who I basically sold in 15 minutes <laughs> after talking to him, um, said, look, I, you know, I tasted the product. It's great. Now we just, we've got to figure out a way to get it out there. So um, when you take on new, when you take on new uh, uh, investors, yeah, it's, you have to prove to them that, you know, no, you can't be afraid to work, Jason. You got to, you know, it's hard work. Yeah, the, it just there's stuck, no such thing as a nine to five entrepreneur, right? No, 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 no. You know, and you have to be able to step it up. You know, when they came along, you know, we put together a good plan. Um, well, Greg, myself, and Melanie and said, "Look, you know, how can we?" You know, after speaking with Cisco, you know, the big uh, distribution company said, "You know, you need, you know, if you can get into at least thirty stores, we can talk." So after, you know, at the end of last year, we were in, like I said, fifty plus stores. Went back to them, they're like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> You guys did it. Um, how'd you do it? You never know our game plan. Because in fact, now what they want to do is that um, to push our product, um, I'm going to have to go out on the road with their salespeople to show them how to push and how to present the product to store managers and owners. Um, because they, you know, they, when they found out, like I said, how did you get 50 stores or that many stores in um, a short period of time? It was, again, you have to have a decent approach. You have to have confidence in what you're doing, you know, and after a while, it all it all sounds the same, but you're dealing with a, you know single different individuals every time, so it just flows. And then the packaging is another thing. I don't know if have you? I think we did send you the product, uh, or maybe I think your daughter. Yeah, my daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. My daughter's gonna re do a review for you on right. your website. She just she was just blown away with the packaging how it looks. She's my my daughter's like she does like yeah. wedding weddings and event, big time events. She's the creative designer or that you know design stuff. I have no idea about. Yeah, she just really loved how yeah. it's packaged. Yeah, and that see, and that's another thing. Once I took the packaging out of the bag, I had their attention because packaging is everything. And, and you know, we had I thought we had decent packaging before we redid it, but not even close. And, and and again, you know, once we take it out, that's how you catch it. Oh wow, what is this? You give it to them, they look at the packaging, they put the you know people who have the glass up, put the glass, they start re reading, and okay, um, they'll say either give me you know let me try it out first. And that's what Melly would come in. She would do the follow-ups and she is relentless when it comes to follow -ups. If she didn't get you that day, until you give her an answer, she will not give up. And that's what you need on your team. She, you know, and you know, I had one guy say to me when I dropped off tea at the store for the first time, he goes, wow, he goes, your partner is relentless. <laughs> that's what you need in a business nowadays. That's how you got to be. That's right. That's right. And you know, like I said, I praise her because, you know, she, <laughs> she's built for that, you know, and like I said, and I tried to convince Greg and those guys in the beginning, look, Melanie's also the face. Well, then they didn't, they it took them a while to realize that maybe a good six months. And then once they realized that the responsibility that she took on and that she you know, continues to carry to this day, it's probably, you know, she's, you can't replace her. So, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, it, yeah. So Mark, let's switch a little bit. Let's go to some, some of the kind of personal. So yeah. your, your youngest son has epilepsy. Can yes, you sir. talk about what is epilepsy? So people don't know what is that. Well, it's yeah, epilepsy is it's it's you're prone to seizures. Now there are different levels of seizures. I mean, there's grandma meaning the worst you can have, which is you know you literally stop breathing for two minutes plus, which is dangerous. And you can also have with on a lower level, you can have what they call breakthrough seizures, which are more like flinches, eye flinches, a glitch like you know where you kind of just move. Um, and you know a few things set it off for him. You know it's it's all in the brain. The sun can trigger it. Um, lack of sleep can trigger it, um, high temperature can trigger it, and also obviously trauma to the head. You know, for instance, let me give you an example. You know, I just dropped my kids off 
before the, they spent the night with me last night. So I'm on the way back home and Ty, my youngest son, name is Tyler. He's sitting in the back seat and I have to make sure that the sun is not coming in in anywhere where it's hitting him in the face. He's literally, he's literally like a moth to a flame. And he looks into the sun and then boom, it triggers seizures. So, um, but the biggest problem with seizures and kids today is our medical world, which is so advanced today, um, doesn't have seizure medication for children. So the biggest problem that I had in the beginning, because I already knew about um, seizure medications because of a previous job that I had years ago when I was in college, I worked at a group home and one of the women had seizures and I administered her meds. It was called phenobarbital for adults, for more, mainly for adults. Well, not for children. Well, in order to stop his, his grandma's seizures at the age of three months, they had to put him on a heavy dose of a serious uh, seizure medication. Well, that entailed basically just stunning his growth, it his, stopped his brain from developing. It was, you know, you damn if you do, damn if you don't. Um, Ty's a lot of work. He's like, he's 100% dependent. And, you know, like I said, he still wears diapers. He's 11 years old, still wears diapers. Um, and it's, 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 I, it's a tough job. It's so a tough is this, job. is this like based on, is this like hereditary genetics? Just no. you know, like this unlock of the draw, so to speak, or just. Unluck, unluck, it was unlock of the draw. Okay. It just happened. No, we, we actually think it was something that happened during birth that, but you know, we said, you know, there's not, we can't change it. You know, we didn't want to go down that rabbit hole trying to accuse anyone of, of you know, going after anyone. We say, you know what, this is the hand we would dealt. He's my son, regardless. I'm going to raise him, take care of him, protect him and do what I can to, to make sure that he has the most comfortable life. And, you know, it's, it's a lot, like I said, it's a lot of work, but Jason, these boys, they, they motivate me every single day. Um, and it's tiring. It can be tired. You come home, you know, you come home at times and you're just not, you know, you're very tired and you had a long day and I got my boys and, you know, Tyra, he does quite some attention. He likes to be around. He loves Melody. So, so you're younger than you're you hug, constantly hugging and kissing on it. you younger than you're basically have to take care of him the rest for his whole life. Correct. Absolutely. 100%. So, you know, and one thing I want to avoid Jason is, you know, you know, putting him into these institutions, to, you know, these days, because, you know, when I was in, I attended Northeastern back in the day, um, a long time ago, and I went there for about a year, and I got a, a part-time job as a, a orderly at a mental hospital. And uh, so I, you know, I, I dealt with people with all different levels of disabilities, and, you know, I saw how those, those companies or those institutions were ran, and I didn't, I didn't like it. It, it was, it was sad. You know, you had, you know, you couldn't, you hired people who the job, it was like a revolving door of, of staff because they didn't, they couldn't handle the job and people like my son, Ty. So you would hire these people, unsavory people who were just not, you know, you can, people who had no experience, but they were desperate for help. So they would pay them at the time. It was like 11, 10 bucks an hour. And it was, I've seen some of these clients get abused and, you know, lawsuits and, I want no part of that for my son. So, you know, if I could, you know, you know, get the means to take care of him now and then pass that down to my son, Gavin, um, somehow continue. But, you know, if I can avoid, you know, having to put him in an institution, I mean, and I haven't mentioned his mother, he does have a mom, um, but, uh, you know, we obviously not together anymore, you know, but she's, you know, she, she's about around my age. So, you know, Tyler's, he's only 11. So 30 years from now, you know, I'm gonna be in my 80s. <laughs> I won't even think about that, but um, you know, and I do worry my son's well-being. So, you know, like I said, uh, you know, to be able to be able to have the finances to get him the best help possible, as opposed to putting him in a state institution and you get what you get, and you know, I, I can't see that happening. Um, he's too precious to me, and um, you know, and in fact, it makes me emotional even talking about it because you know he's going to need help for the rest of his life, rest of his life. And you know, I talked to my son Gavin. Look, you know. It's going to be our job to take care of our boy, your brother, my son, and he gets it, you know, so, um, but, you know, I'm living here now in the moment. That's ways in a while, uh, a ways away. I feel great. Um, I'm healthy. My boys are healthy and, you know, we're living a day to day right now. So. So Marvin, maybe it brings another good point. A lot of time when people start a company, you know, they know some your hard work, all blasey blasey, but like yeah. people don't realize life goes on, right? Like you still got to like wash clothes, you know, take That's your right. kids to school, you know? That's right. You know, and then not only that, not only for yourself, like your, your stuff happens to employees too. Like you might have like 10 people, two, four people working for you, right? 
one of them might say, hey, I'm about to get a divorce. So that can be focused. So I'm always about to say, you know, while well, this going on, everyone has personal stuff going on. And, and I mean, right. people, yeah. I don't think people get that right. Life still happens, right? And you, you got to deal right. with it. Amen. And, and, you know, like I said, um, I, like, I, like I said, I was fortunate enough to, you know, with Ty, especially with the business, I was fortunate enough to have, like I said, I, I, I praise Melanie again. Um, when I, when I had to go and, and tend to Ty, you know, a couple of times I had to go down to a good example, Ty wears a feeding tube. He, um, you know, because uh, at the time we had to administer his medication. He was via his, his feeding tube. Um, because obviously, you know, he wasn't going to take these big pills. He wasn't, you know, he spit it out. Um, one time his feeding tube came out while he was in school and the nurse at the school didn't know how to put it back in. So I had to leave my personal training job to go down to his school to literally grab some gloves, put his tube back in. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I was a little annoyed because I was like, you know, if you're going to have these kids in this school, you should be able to know how to do these things. And she was, oh, you could tell she was a little skeeved out. And I, well, that, after that semester, we took them out of that school. Um, because again, you know, like I said, we had lives. So when he's in school, I think that he's taken care of, but that wasn't the case. So yeah, I I'm like, like you're, you're a nurse, right? Like you are a That's nurse, right. right? Like That's right. Am I missing something right. here? Or, are you like a play nurse That's or practice nurse or are you actually a nurse? Yeah. And I let her have it. I let her have it, you know, because rightfully so. And then I went to the administration and then I said, look, I said, you know, these women, are, these women are not trained to deal with him. Then why is he here? You know, we, this may happen again. He pulled it out. Oh, not intentionally. He pulled it out. So, uh, but like I said, needless to say, after that semester, he never went back. Um, and we've, he's been in quite a few schools. In, in fact, right now, there's a case going on in the school that he's in about more abuse towards other children. So it's an ongoing thing, Jason. You have to, it's always in the back of your mind, you know, because, oh, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you, your video okay. went off, though. Yeah, okay. you're back. Okay. okay. Okay, um, you know, it's an ongoing thing. It's constant. Now there's a lawsuit, and you know, now I'm worried about my son to make sure that he wasn't one of the kids that was being abused. Come mm -hmm. to find out that he wasn't, but the school that he's in now, now well, again, we have to look for another school. So it's it's constant, you know. And you know, my ex, who uh, you know, she does all that part, you know, finding the schools and everything. Because obviously, I can't do it all. She does that part of it, but it, it's exhausting. And and you know, for Ty, it's I don't, you know. He, he's my everything. And to, to hear that those kids are being abused, it, it, you know, it hurts. It really does hurt. Because and a lot, a lot of these times, these people who work for, in these jobs don't have a lot of patience for these kids. They're there for a paycheck. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, with Ty, it's, it's, he's my everything. So I'll, I'll stop the world if I have to, to go tend to him. You know, um, and Greg, my partner, and Melanie, who, like I said, who, who had to pick up the slack, they're well aware of that. So if I have to drop the ball right now and go, then, you know, they're there to pick up the slack. So that's, that's good for you. So Mari, back um, to your business. But it's, 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 it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Man. Yeah. Um, talk about your Mari's guarantee that you have for your team. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it says it all. If you don't like our, our team, we'll give you back your money. I mean, and again, the one, I think the, the reason why most people do not like our product is because they don't like it with sweetener. Other than that, it's it's a good balance. I mean, it's the honey doesn't overtake the tea. And another good thing about it is you can you can time it. You could you can time your level of sweetness. So in other words, if when I for instance when I do my demos at these stores, I always make a batch, the batch of just a hint of honey, you know, not too sweet, which is about four minutes. If you like it sweeter, just leave the tea bag in, and the tea and the, the sweetener does its thing. So it's, it's, you know, it, we give people options, you know, not just, you know, um, a level of uh, sweetness, but a level of sweetness to where you like it. Me, you know, I like to leave it in, the tea bag in, like get as sweet as possible. But you know, I have people say, I leave it in for three minutes, four minutes, and I love it. And on top of that, if you take it out after three and a half, four minutes, you can actually reuse the bag. <laughs> you can make another maybe eight ounces. So it's, uh, it's some, and I stand behind it, but, you know, it's funny. We have yet to have, have to um, give money back. <laughs> it hasn't ha hasn't happened yet, so. so know, um, for your yeah. honey, it's, it's called granulated honey, right? Yes, yes, sir. What, what is that exactly? Well, what you do is it's it. Honey can't bind by itself, so what they do is they take raw sugar, and they mix it and they bake it, and they make it into a, a crystallized formation, and then they break it up, they grind it up, and then you have granulated honey, and it's a good 
you know, we all know honey has the health benefits. And, and I think a lot of people, so let me give you an example. A lot of people, when they most average, the average person uses about a tablespoon of honey, which is about 40 calories. One, uh, one bag, is on, one of our bags is only 28 calories. And I think for people with diabetes, you know, people who are trying to watch their weight, you know, people who have um, you know, issues with sugar, this is a great product. Um, again, I mean, it, it, it's, people say sugar, we use cane sugar. You can't, there's no way to crystallize honey without a hard sugar, whether it be agave or a sugar in the raw, whatever. But we decided to use cane sugar because it's, cane sugar is its most natural form. I mean, you got a lot of uh, uh, crappy sugars out there. So we went with the cane sugar instead. And we let people know that, look, this is how it's made because it's not just pure honey by itself. In order to bind honey, with, uh, to make it granulated, it had to be bind, uh, binded with a, 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 some type of raw sugar. So, but again, people look at the calories, 28 calories. You can't go wrong with that. That's for a cup of tea, sweetened. So, Mari, I have to imagine you don't make your own honey. Like, how do you, how do you source your honey? Like, I'm sure you have to make that, you want the highest quality honey. How, how do you make sure you have the highest quality honey possible for your, for your product? Well, we get the information from our, the, 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 you know, greater than honey is already mass produced, but there's about a different, maybe 50 different companies doing it. So we asked for their, their spec sheet on the information on what is, what is made with. You know, like I said, we, uh, cane sugar is, is the purest kind of uh, sugar that you, purest and the cleanest that you can eat, uh, you can you know, consume. So if they use anything other than cane sugar, I want to give, with, give an example, Domino's, um, one in our business. Um, so they said to us, we'll give you a pound of, sh uh, a pound of our granulated honey for uh, 58 cents per pound. Now, mind you, we were paying at the time three, four dollars a pound. Like, oh, hell, take that. Send it to us. So they sent it, you know, sent us samples. <laughs> so I go to drink the, smells great and everything. It's honey, I can smell it. I decide to, you know, put it in a tea bag and mix it with the, one of the uh, green tea and I go to taste it. It tastes like nothing but sugar. So I started giving out samples because, you know, you're trying to cut corners, you're trying to save money. So 30, you know, 58 cents a pound as opposed to three bucks a pound is, you know, good for your pocket. Unique economics. But it was too good to be true. Absolutely. But it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't to be. So we went with, uh, we, went, we, we get the information for that. We are, our grain and honey, grain and honey is coming from a company in the Midwest. So we vetted them, you know, like you would not believe as far as their ingredients, what was in there. And so that we can give. So they sent us the spec sheets. So if anyone needs to figure out what's, you know, what's in it, they can always go on our website to figure out how we make our honey. Um, we don't actually make the granulated honey ourselves. I think some people think we do that, uh, but no, we don't do that. That's a process that, you know, and thank God there's other companies that do it because when we first started out, started out, you know, me and my partners, we tried to crystallize our own honey by sending it out in the sun, all kinds of things, and it just didn't work, you know, so. Um, we were able to find a company. We invented, we went through maybe 20 different companies and we narrowed it down to one co main company. We have a backup company out in California, just in case. So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so it's again, and most people look at the calories, look at the calorie content, the sugar content, calorie content, especially if you're, if you're a healthy, you know, um, uh, you know, person consumes healthy goods, uh, healthy foods, let's just say, um, when they read the calorie intake or the calories on the box, and then they taste it. They absolutely love it. So, 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 Mari, um, you, yes. you, took, you you took a seed equity investment for that. Did did, did you go? Did you did you go fundraise? You start. Did you look for yourself, or did the money sort of come to you? How did that work out? Well, the money to well, you know uh, the money came to us actually. Once I I pitched it to my partner Greg, um, um, and then he went to because you know Greg, Greg worked for a um, he, um, he worked. He's now all uh, he's uh, he's uh, full-time more is IT now, but he worked for a hedge funds company and he went to him and said, look, I have a great idea, guys, who wants to get on board? And um, once they tried it out and they looked at the packaging and, um, or before our, our previous packaging, and uh, Greg said, look, you know, this, you know, this might be something, no one, the, the key, Jason, is no one's doing what we're doing. If you can get that through to the investors that we're the only ones doing this right now, if we can get this out there before copycats, it can be huge. We want because, you know, we, we know once it does really blow up, we're going to get copycats, but we want to be the first. And that's what we strive to be. Um, uh, it, again, the money came to us. And, and like I said, I was able to even, you know, to save money from training, to even invest in my own company. Um, you know, they, they call the investor and they, uh, I don't know if it's an investor and a 
handler and one of the and my partner Greg was like, well, you know, we have we have people for that. I'm like, no, I want to invest in my own company because they say you got you know you don't own your company until you you know you invest it you know invest in your own money. So I decided to do that. I invested thousand, and um, you know, I, listen, what we have, Jason, is a special product, and I'm not just saying that. If you're a tea drinker, you know, again, you know, we do these demos, and I'm only going on the you know the reaction from the customers. They love it. You know, most people don't even drink. Don't even know what whole leaf tea is. They they're used to drinking the Lipton or the Tetley or that no, you know, shit that doesn't taste like much of anything. And then when they taste our pot, they taste the bold flavor of the tea. And then not only that, but then they say to themselves, okay, is this worth 10 bucks? You know, is it worth you know spending 10 bucks? Again, it's the quality, and then the number one thing I think or well, number two other than taste is convenience. They love the convenient part of it. You know, all you need is you can take it, put it in your purse. All you need is get, you know, pour a cup of hot water, put it at the office or at the gym, drop the tea bag in, let it steep, and you're good to go. So, you know, we, you know, we push those things to, to, on people because, again, people will pay for convenience if the product is good. So, and one, I, and, and another thing, Jason, you know, I'm not, like I said, I don't need to jump through hoops to sell my product to get people, you know, to sell my product if, if, if it's mediocre. It's not. It's, a, it's some good shit we have pushing here. So, um, and, I'm, and I'm only saying that because of the feedback we've gotten over the years um, from our tastings and demos and, you know, um, testimonials. So, uh, you know, as when you say, we, you know, we mentioned the, uh, the, the guarantee. Yeah, we guarantee it because our product, it's, it's good. It's some good stuff. So um, Mari, that's why I'm, I get, yeah. Can you talk about how you market, how you market and sell your product? Mark, yes. Well, when, once we got the capital, it all started basically, it was, it was all social media blitz. I mean, we, we were on every major social media platform. And then, because before I even got out on the road, we were, like I said, we were doing social media blitz. And then what we started doing was, we started giving people incentives to buy the tea, at least to try the tea, by, for instance, you know, free shipping, or, you know, or if you don't like it, guaranteed money back. Um, but, it was, but to start out, it was, it, was, it was basically word of mouth, well, I should say, advertising via social media, which we did, we spent a good chunk of change doing that and, uh, and then word of mouth. And we're still growing to this day. Um, when, what we're looking for now is <laughs> we're looking for some major, not necessarily major person or major figure to give us a plug, you know, we're, so we're constantly hashtagging, you know, we look for people who love tea, you know, athletes, movie stars, musicians, you know, we're constantly looking for those things. And that's Melanie, she's hashtagging, offering this, like we, we're, we said, uh, product to Oprah, but we sent it to Oprah at a wrong time because at the time she was a partner with Taz OT. So we were like, oh, she's not gonna respond to that, to that you know, to our product. So we never knew what happened to it, but um, it's, it, was, it was mainly to get us off the ground because again, during last year, you couldn't really get out there during the pandemic. So we really, we blew up social media with our product and it really paid off, really paid off. So- uh, which, which, social, social, which, which social media platform did you, did you have the most success on? Um, I would say, Right now, it'd probably be Instagram. Instagram, Instagram. Um, uh, LinkedIn is uh, is growing. Uh, um, um, Twitter is growing, but I would say Facebook was good. But it's, uh, but link uh, Instagram was was by far, by far um, our best avenue. Um, we picked up endorsements from Instagram. Um, you know, we it, it was, and I listen. I get. I got to give that all that credit to Greg because I didn't know crap about how to get our product out there like that. And, you know, we got the money, we, you know, we got the investment money and we, we, Greg, he mapped everything out and, you know, we, every dime was accounted for and we did a social media blitz and it paid off. So now, you know, to the point to where he's able to quit his job and I'm able to dumb down my training to do spend more time with Maury's IT. So. And so are, are, are most of your, most of your customers, customers in the Northeast or you nationwide? Oh, well, because thanks, thanks to uh, our online, uh, uh, um, we're nationwide now. Nationwide. We're in, I think 30, 38 to 40 different states right now that, you know, that are, that have, had a, have ordered. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's nationwide. We were, we were, main, we were mainly uh, in the area of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut at one point, uh, even before the investors came along, meaning we were getting the orders from and stores in the area. But once we got that, we did the social media blitz, you know, we, and then I got on the road, you know, we went up into Massachusetts, you know, Rhode Island, you know, um, and up into Northern New England and, you know, we're still climbing. So and we, listen, we still have our work cut out for us, but we're a hell of a lot, you know, far along than we were, you know, two years ago. 
So. Yes. So Mari, um, I got a brain freeze real fast. Yes. So of course, of course, you know, you want to settle all, all tea lovers, all tea drinkers, but is there a certain demographic of tea, tea lovers you want to go to like, you know, 25 to 35 year old females or like no. boomers or is it like any kind of certain demographic to take market or is this all tea lovers? Well, and the, good question, Jason. In the beginning, you know, we tried, we thought we could just market to, you know, the older, maybe mid, you know, late twenties and up. But then what we found out that was a lot of kids, college kids, you know, even kids were starting to drink tea. And once I started doing the tastings and the demos, um, and I would present this to them. And again, it's all about convenience. You know, these kids were like, wait a minute, I don't need any sugar. Nope. I don't need any honey. Nope. And then they would drop it in and try it and, and they love it. So now we have kids. When I was at, the, uh, at New York Sports Club, I had a bunch of kids during the summer coming in and I would give out samples and then they were like, um, I would like to order your tea. So we, cha- we, we went from, you know, that, uh, you know, late, uh, late 20s, early 30s group to a hey, 17, 18. So we market to anybody at this point, because, again, um, if you think about it 20, 30 years ago, you know, I was drinking tea 20, year, 20 years ago. I was a coffee drink. You know, I was, you know, so we had to. What changed? So we said, you know what, the convenience, and then that we had the grain and honey already in the bag. That changed everything. So it just brought people towards us to look, we like your product. You know, I was doing clients in homes and um, not just the moms and the dads that I was training, but the kids were drinking as well. So, um, you know, we, we, we market it to any and everyone at this point. So, so Mario, I have no idea, but I have to imagine yeah. there's not very many black owned tea companies in the world of the United no. States, right? Can you talk no. about like being a black owned company and specific for a tea company, like the challenges, rewards, like advantage or disadvantage yeah. on that whole, whole thing right there? Right. Well, you know, it's funny when we first got started, you know, um, you know, people kept saying that you're a black owned. My biggest challenge, Jason, was not so much. I didn't see my skin color at first. I just wanted to get a product that we had out there. OK, now, once I got out there, that's when I started noticing, oh, yeah, you're a black owned tea company, black owned tea company. I had some people kind of, you know, going into stores and, you know, people looking me up and down like, no, I'm not interested. And I've had that happen quite a few times. No, nothing direct, but it's a feeling or uh, something that I've dealt with all my life. So I knew what it was. Um, but to own my own, you know, to be a black owned entrepreneur, I tell you, like I said, I mentioned this before. It's, it's a great feeling. And what I would want to do, Jason, is once this gets, once this blows up, I literally want to go back. To all the people that I know who, who to this day are trying to get their product off the ground, people of color, um, not just black people, people look up people of color, and pull them up because I, there's some, listen, there's some great there's some great ideas out there right now that are not even giving getting looked at, and it's it's pretty sad. And it, it's you know the banks clamped down after 2008, um, but I had a ill feeling towards the banks before that, you know when it comes to dealing with, um, you know, black owned businesses, because I have uh, people that I've known in the past who tried to own a business, but, um, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling. Um, you know, um, I get, you know, people, Oh, great for you. Good for you. But you know, good for me. No, that don't look at me as being a black person. Look at me as being an entrepreneur, you know, look at me as having a good product that I'm trying to get out there. And again, it's, I jump. I always leapfrog over the, you know, the parts of the being a black-owned business because, again, um, you know, it's you, you can also go down a rabbit hole as to why you think, you know, there are a lot of black, you know, black people who can't start start companies, and we know that to be, you know, again, that's politics. I don't want to go into, but it's there. It's it's there, live and well. Um, but I did. I don't. I don't pay attention to all that. I I, I look at what I have. I had a great a product. I present my. I take care of myself physically. You know, and, and when I, you know, when I walk up on people, you know, it's, look, you know, it's not, oh, you got my product. It's, you know, look, you know, we have a good product. My name is Maury Pittman. And, you know, most people don't see color after that. They look at my product, oh, okay, this is great. But being a black owned company, it, it's great and all, but my biggest thing is pulling other people of color up and bringing them up and letting them shine, um, get the opportunity to, to show the world what they, what they have and what they can do. It's, it's tough. It is, you know, I could talk about this to blue in the face and, but again, um, I'm here now and I'm going to grow this business. And again, once I get it up and, and running, I'm going to slowly bring everyone else up. I have good, two good friends, two best friends who have, who have good ideas, great ideas, who need funding. Um, and they're, they're literally watching me to see where we go. So, you know, um, they can piggyback. And I'm, I'm willing to do that. And, and don't get me wrong, uh, not just people of color, but majority. 
people of color I would like to help out. I would like to help anyone out. But again, I know who has the hardest time in this situation, and that is people like me. You know, this country is a little lopsided when it comes to, you know, um, letting people be themselves and grow their own business and even give them the opportunity. So um, I want to get on. I want to pull some people up and help help anybody for the most part, but the majority, I want to to pull up people of color because, you know, everything's stacked against them to begin with. So. So, Mark, can you talk about this? And this is my personal opinion, right? There's a lot of uh, yeah. small business owners, entrepreneurs out there. And they'll be like, they'll say like they're black owned, military veteran owned, you know, put blank, uh, whatever you want, you know, blank space owned, whatever it is, right? And a lot of them seem like they they expect to be supported by community without providing a great service, a great customer service, great product. They expect, well, like I'm Jason Cavalist, I have a veteran company. All veterans should buy my HR because I'm a veteran, right? And I right. think too many people have that, that has an advice set, right? Like, how do you change that? I mean, you gotta, you gotta have a, I mean, it's no more likely to come to me because I'm very, I still have like a great product, great, great service, right? It just can't be, here's my right. business, right? Right. Well, I mean, for, you know, and, that, and that's, a good, that's another good question. You know, me starting out, I learned from how I got started. And, you know, I mentioned the fact that, you know, I'm not selling you some half-ass fluff product, you know? So I'm going to market and advertise to no end to push some mediocre product. No, I believe in what I'm doing. My product is good. So by me looking for other entrepreneurs coming up, they're gonna, have to, they're gonna have to have the same feel about it. You're gonna have to love what you're doing. The product or whatever you're trying to push, you're gonna have to believe in. Does that product, if it's, you know, if it's uh, something, you know, like a device, does it work? Or, you know, it, it's, I don't have time for the mediocre. If it's mediocre and, I, and if, I, if I think it's, give an example, my Melanie bought these ice cream yesterday from a store and, it had, it was a green tea, whatever. Now it's, the packaging was great. It, it looked great, but then when I tried it, it tasted like crap. So my question is, how the hell did they get that far with that product? Now, my son is a guinea pig. He loves sweets. He didn't like it. So you knew it wasn't, it wasn't well, a good product. He, he doesn't pass the sun test. It's a, it's a no brainer. That, that's right. So, you know, so, but, so to answer your question again, um, I don't deal with the fluff. I, I, I look at the person if you believe in, if, if your number one, if your product's good, number one, whatever, whatever, regardless of what you're selling, if your product is good and it does what it says it's going to do or, or it does what you advertise it to do, then that's number one. You know, it also depends on the, per, the person that's pushing that product. Are you ready to work hard? And again, like you said, I'm a black owned business. Well, just because I'm a black owned business doesn't mean, uh, you know, I'm, and you go to black, you know, you go to a black, uh, you go to uh, uh, um, a black function and you got a mediocre product. One thing about black people, they're going to tell you, uh-uh, <laughs> this is not good. Trust me. You know, and for instance, to give you an example, you know, most of my parents are from the South. Well, my mom likes the tea, but the reason why she doesn't love it is because it's not sweet enough. You know, <laughs> I, I but can't see, imagine. But, but that's their generation. <laughs> that's their generation. So I get that. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't really target their generation because I know that. That's what I grew up on. So your so mom's like, you where's the sugar at? <laughs> Exactly. Well, she likes it, but she's like, ah, I like it a little sweeter. So she adds a little more honey to it. So, which is fine because she likes the whole leaf tea. <laughs> That's the benefit she likes from it. But like I said, to answer your question again, if no, you know, it's not just if you got to have a good product. Number one, forget about that. Just because, I'm, just because. No, uh, uh-uh. you know, um, it, it, it's it's a you know it's a good product. The person pushing that product, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice to put your time and and, and to really because you know, like you said, you got to put your work into this. You got to put your heart and soul. Until this, you can't go dibble and dabble. You you know you know I'm gonna go do this and do that. And then oh yeah, I have a business to run. It doesn't. Eventually, the business overtakes you. You see, what I'm saying if you're really trying to push that business, you know, like I said, I'm able to be able to be a personal trainer because I know that like the back of my hand. I've been doing that forever. And then you know to come back and do Maury's High Tea, you know, I know I rest on the fact that you know Melanie and Greg and myself what pushing people like you know it's not like we're not selling mediocre shit or fluff or whatever no it's good good quality tea so when i go to look for people that i want to help out or pull up or whatever else i'm looking for the same thing you know i'm looking for like i said i'm looking for your your product to be decent or to do what it says it's going to do or you know to um and again what do you what what value do you as the owner add to that product like for instance you know me being a personal trainer so when i meet you for the first time and you say, well, he's looks over out of weight and doesn't take care of himself. Well, then that says it right there. I mean, you know, we, we meet, I say I'm a personal trainer, but like, I can see that. 
<laughs> you know, it's it's what I it's what I you know because I live it. You know, I'm you know not just a personal trainer going out to train people. I love taking care of myself. Same thing with my tea. We live this. We make sure that we got the best ingredients. We got you know it tastes great. You know, the packaging looks damn good. You know, so for us, you know, we we're on something we're on that path. And again, you know, people who want to you know start to do what we do, you know, it's. <laughs> You got to work hard. It's a lot of hard work, and you. And here's the deal: you need to deal with that. You cannot be afraid to work hard. Okay, you can't be afraid of that because it. it, it I'm on my twelfth year, and we're still growing. So, it, it, it's you're gonna be told a no most times because most people don't like change. Most people go to freaking Amazon. They already know what they need. They already know what they want. They're not looking for your tea. So, how do you stand out from that? You know. So, in fact. Amazon just came to us, tracked us down, and said, look, we want to carry your product. Now, a few years ago, we tried to get up there. They're like, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> now they're looking for us. So we're doing something right here. We're doing something right. So, so Mark, earlier in our talk, you, you said uh, that there, there came a time you knew you had something special. Can you talk, talk about when yes. that clicked in your mind? Like, okay, you know what? This, we have something special here. Like, how'd that come about? Right. I do know that. I knew, uh, 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 you know, the... The first, uh, I would say the first demos, the first maybe five to 10 demos that we did, literally the first 10. And I was scared like you would not believe. I was like, oh, people, and I swear every person, even if they didn't buy the tea, they loved it. That was my, that was my crypto, I mean, that was not crypto, that was my, it was my, it was my motivation because, I mean, you get these little old ladies, you get the young kids, and I would say, you know, you camped out for two to three hours trying to push your tea. And when you get people to try it to the point where we're like, oh, this is good. You know, it, it kept going. It kept going. I looked at Mel one time. I was like, I think we're really on to something. And it, 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 it just kept building. Because, you know, we had when I started selling the tea bags at New York Sports Club. But that was different because once you get out there in the masses and start dealing with different, you know, different cities and different people, different towns, different areas, different stores, and getting the same results nine times out of ten about your product, then you know you're on to something. Literally, I mean, it was, okay, we don't have to change anything at this point because we kept dibbling and dabbling with how much granules you leave in the bag, you know, how, um, how tea format's easy. You use about two, most people use about between 1.8 and two grams of tea in every tea bag. But the granulated honey, which I won't tell you how much we use in there. Um, but yeah, that that was tricky at first because we kept getting too many, so many mixed, mixed, um, mixed uh, comments about, oh, it's too sweet or not sweet enough. So finally, we came up with a, a, a right amount of balance to where you can say, okay, fine, you can steep this tea at your at your level of sweetness. And once we did that, then we knew we were on something. Yeah, I think that's so, definitely a game changer, that right there. Absolutely. I think that, that definitely sets you apart, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, you, you, you always talk about the sum through our talk, but can you go into more detail, like how the company got started, like the beginning of it, what you're focused on right now for your company, and what your, okay, future, yeah. plan, and what your future plans for the company? Gotcha. Well, we uh, how we got started was uh, I, I said my bio. Well, maybe not in the, on, on the website. Uh, it, uh, everything goes back to me training at uh, at the gym. Um, it was a it was December. I think it was December of uh, 08 or 09. No, further back, maybe 06. And I was training his client. He was a he was an older guy, maybe close to 70, but a health nut. Loved his green tea, Olong tea. Knew everything about teas, everything. So I had the sniffles. I'm, I was coming down with something and he goes, I have a bag of green tea if you want it. I was like, ah, I'm not a green tea drinker. Oh, he goes, started get, he started running down the health benefits of tea. And I was like, oh, that's good. So, you know, when he left, I tried to eat, oh, the aftertaste was bad. I just didn't. I did. So I called him up from it. I'm not a big fan of this green tea. I said, um, you know, we talked, talk, I said, hey, I want to try it with sugar, but I wasn't a fan of sugar at the time. And I was, I really was eating how I help, what I put in my body. And uh, he goes, well, there's agave. So we're like, ah, agave. But then after doing our research about, I realized that it, it was all hype. Agave was better than sugar with honey. Then we came up with crystallized honey on our own. So we, before we knew there was a market out there, um, long story short, we found a, we found a company. We asked, we sent away for the samples. Um, and then once that started happening, I started uh, making tea bags for the clients at the gym. Um, I would go home at night, put my voice down to sleep, and I would stay up and make tea bags and sell them a dollar a bag. 
to the point that guys, I, Melanie, I said, Melanie, I said, we're on to something here. <laughs> so we went ahead and we filed our, our license for Maury's High, for, um, Maury's High Tea through the state of New York. Um, and we got all the proper paperwork. And then I hooked up with a graphic design artist to help me come up with our first box pack. It was in a craft box at the time. Um, and she came up with that and I got um, someone to help us do uh, the trademark. And it was a process, but it, it's, it all lined, it kept going. We just kept moving. We kept getting things accomplished and things, getting things done. And once we found, oh, and we also did a, um, it's kind of funny. Um, we did a, um, for packaging, we, I brought a bunch of tea wrapped in these little colorful bags to get a feel for who would grab what color. It was amazing how we did this. And people, we had orange, yellow, red, green, and black. And it would have two bags, each two bags of tea in each bag with a ribbon around it. And people started grabbing the yellow, they took the red, and they took the orange. And we were like, okay, so why are they taking these colors? We did our research. Those colors, for some reason, made you feel good, made you feel better. That's how we came up with the first packaging. That's how we did it. Yeah, Mario, you, know, you know, that's a good lesson. Like, before I come an entrepreneur, I like someone to say yeah. pick blue or like blue. They're like, no, I had not an idea. Like, blue colors had numbers, right? Like, RBG, yeah. all this stuff, yeah, yeah. blue. Like, I have like seven yeah. different versions of blue. I had no idea those numbers assigned to blue, right? All this, or like, yeah. colors right. meant things, right? Like, if you do blue, Absolutely. you feel like this, orange, you feel like this, you know? Psychological. It's all it's all psych and because my and it was all and it, this was my and I don't talk enough about him. My uh, my mentor, his name is Michael Corey, who got me started on this. He was my client. He was the one who came up with the idea about the color coordination as to whatever they pick off the off because we people walk into the gym and right on the front desk we had them all lined up. I said feel free to take one if you like. And we I started noticing the colors that they were taking, and I would go back and replace it with the same color as they take it, and boom, it would take it. So they left majority of the other colors but it took three main colors that's how we made the first came up with the initial for the morris high tea green and black boxes oh, that's, so that's, again that's, it, that's great customer research right there that's how you do it that's right and but thank, and thank god to my mentor because he was like look we, we got to get the people how do you get to these people and he came up with that idea and well melanie put together these little uh they were like these see-through like colorful little with ribbons on. she did it up so nice because they people like oh what is this it, it caught their attention and then, but again, they started grabbing what they wanted. And then, so we knew then uh, the, the color coordination, the color scheme that we were, we were going to. We didn't let people know what we were doing at the time, but, you know, and then it, they left, like, like I said, they left the black sitting there, they left the red sitting there, but like, like the yellow, the orange, and there's one other color, but yeah, they, that's how we got it started. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, was, it was well thought out before we even put our first product out there, so. Um, my business plan was over 100 pages. <laughs> you know, the business plan took, you know, we, we didn't have a 10 page business plan. It took me um, maybe five, six months. We did, it, uh, we did it a couple of times a week, me and my mentor. I would go over to his house after, you know, day of training and we were sitting, we would bang it out with graphs and everything. It was well thought out. So when we presented that business plan to professionals, they were like, they expected this little rinky dink, you know, a few pages. We pulled it out and they're like, here you go. And they were like, whoa. You know, it, it was, and then they went through like, wow, this is well thought out. I, I, you know, and so we knew we were on the right track then. Um, and uh, that led to, you know, from going, selling you know, a dollar bag to boxing, boxing, putting it in boxes and then putting it on shelves. And you know, it was a chilling feeling when you see your product on the shelf for the first time, you know, it was and weird. It, and it's even better feeling when you see the product going off the shelf for the first time. Oh yeah. And that's another thing, doing the demos, um, you know, when you go into these places for the first time, and you're trying to sell boxes. Well, the, the, whole, the key to these the demos in these stores is they want to see you sell your product off their shelf while you're there. So that was great for us because we, you know, we were doing average 25 to 30 boxes every time we did a demo. 20, and we were only there for two and a half hours. So for them, they were like, oh, wait a minute. You, and you know, at the time, the price tag was someplace with 14 bucks for a box, 15 bucks. And people, were, they were buying it. So once they tasted it, they bought it. And then the key was, that was the beginning. It was the return customers to make sure that they would go back and look for it. And that continued to happen as well. So. Um, and and what, are you, what, are you, what are you focus right now for your company? Right now to, well, you know, it's funny. I guess it's a good question. You know, we, I'm, try, I'm trying to change the direction of where I'm looking to go right now. You know, as of last maybe 
two or three weeks, we have tried to reach out to, and now the economy has lifted, you know, airlines, hotels, um, um, what's the other airline, hotels, uh, there's another one. But yeah, we, we're looking to get contracts with these hotels where, you know, individually wrap more high tea, green or black can be put in a hotel to where the clients come in. And um, we hooked up with a, 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 um, a professor over at uh, Portland University who wants to help us out um, to, to work with us for marketing. He suggested that we go down that path as well because, you know, going into stores is great and everything, but again, try to find something different. You know, that, oh, I mean, you know, there was a, a cookie store where the boys, a cookie, cookie company where my boys lived. They were made these little chocolate chip cookies. I forget the name of them. Well, they got their start on um, United Airlines, not in stores. The first major contact was United Airlines. That's what gave me the idea. So um, we're looking to push it um, individually instead of taking it out of the box and, you know, make them individual and then, you know, selling them to buy the hundreds to hotels or um, even coffee shops, you know, just some, something a little different than just going into retail stores. Yeah, I don't. Again, I, I don't. It makes any sense how you do it, but I know like a lot of Airbnb Airbnb hosts have yep. like the coffee tea the go. house. You know, like I don't. Yep. You know, I don't know how you do that because a lot of Airbnb people have to reach out to one on one. Right. Well, they all have brokers, just like just like a retail store. They have brokers too, mm -hmm. and the key to this, what I've learned is, you in, in order to deal with some of these companies, you're gonna have to sell your shirt to get them to do business. You know, it's kind of sad, but you know, if we can do a contract, you know, with you know, say the Hilton. For you know a thousand hotels, and they do and they're doing a thousand uh, bags per month in the thousand. I mean, that's that's how you start to grow, and that's how you start to get re recognition. So um, that's my that's my that's my focus now is that you know I did the retail thing last year. We're still trying to get into stores. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to put a little bit more energy into taking Moy's High T to other levels to other meet like like I said, both, um, airlines. They're really, they're starting to serve again. You know, I you know I, I flew business class back in. I think it was 07 to California to a, a co-packing company at the time. And um, they would give me, I asked for a cup of tea and they gave me Lipton. <laughs> so I pulled out my bag of tea out of my bag and I dropped And the guy sitting next to me goes, what is that? I said, I explained to him what it was. And he said, can I try it out? He tried it out. He loved it. Again, it never gets old for me. So, um, you know, that started the, the wheels turning again uh, at that time. But then, like I said, the economy tanked and things went completely south at that time. So we kind of got away from all that and said, you know what, let's just try to get it into stores. Now we're getting into retail stores. Now we're going to try to um, uh, uh, spend more time and in, uh, getting into specialty uh, areas. Like I said, I think the hotel industry is huge. I think the airline industry is huge. We just have to have the right, you know, know the right people to get it in there. And I think um, if we push it, I think uh, it, 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 it may work out for everyone. So. So Mario, for the future of your company, are you trying to like, get a certain amount of certain market share? Do you want to be known as the number one tea company in the world? Like what's your like your big term, like your like your moonshot vision for the company? Good question. Listen, I want to grow, I want to grow my business. I don't want to be, I don't want to grow for the next couple of years. You know, some multimillionaire, billionaire comes and say, I want to buy you out. I would like to grow. I think because again, being that this is the first of its kind, I would like to see this through. I mean, unless unless you came to me with a huge price tag, that's something different, you know. Everything has a price, but um, you know, ten million dollars, twenty million dollars, no. Uh -uh. I want to grow my business. I want I want to do this for the next ten years. Grow it, you know, grow it, uh, grow it, and see if we can uh, make it. How much we can uh, see what it's worth, you know. Again, I, it's like I said. I, I, if I got two million dollars off of this tomorrow, it, it's I, I've got two kids. Two million dollars is nothing. I mean, that's nothing. Yeah, that's that's nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing. I mean, and, you know, um, I was, and, and don't get me wrong now, Jason, I do have other ideas. <laughs> so I do have other ideas. I have three other ideas waiting in the wings. This is just the easiest, easiest to obtain at the moment. But I would like to see Maury's IT grow. Um, I want to be a competitor. I want to, I, you know, I want to shake, I want to shake the leaf a little bit with other competitors saying, look, you know, with the whole leaf tea, like Lipton's gotten away with that, their brand, their name for so long. But, you know, and I can, you know, say, say, I think their tea tastes like nothing. You know, it tastes, if you taste whole leaf tea and you taste Lipton tea, you can't, it's, it's night and day. But they're Lipton. They've been on, you know, they've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And I got, a, I got a feeling that might be one of the companies that might come along and say, hey, can we scoop you up and uh, buy you out? But again, it all depends. You know, it all depends on what they offer. And 
like I said, you know, I have, you know, I have six, seven partners. You know, you, you have the, the price tag, the price tag is going to have to be pretty hefty in order, because again, you know, I don't want to sell my company and walk away with two, three, four, five million dollars. That's no money, you know. Yeah, especially on the, a time and, you know, money you invested in it and the sacrifice you, you. you've done, you know, that's, right. yeah, that's, that's a so, lot. Yeah, that's my plan. I mean, you know, again, I, no, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. So is the plan to pass the company on to your son or, or this, how's that going to work for you? You know, it's funny. <laughs> yes, we, we talked about that. Gavin, my friend, my, my son, my son, Gavin, I, I was like, yeah, maybe one day you could take over the company. He kind of looked at me like, what? <laughs> you know, he's only, he's only 13, you know, but uh, I think um, if I can, you know, if I can, you know, at least keep this company going for the next 10 years, who knows, you know, um, he's, he's only, he's, he's, he's going to be a, a freshman in high school. So he still has, you know, four more years of uh, um, high school and then, you know, college, obviously, who knows? I mean, I want to say college, but the way the world's going today, you know, who knows where, I mean, I'm not a big fan of college today like I used to be, um, but that's another story. Uh, but, you know, I would like to, yeah, if, if Gav, if he's interested, I'm not going to force him to do anything like that, but if he's interested in, and if he wants to work with me, he can do so. But, you know, we're kind of, that's still, still kind of the early stages right now, so. So, Mark, talk about this, and, and, and feel free to disagree with me if you want to. But from my yes, point sir. of view, like, Gavin has, has a great advantage being your son, right? Just because he's learning how to be an entrepreneur, right? He's seeing what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. most, I mean, entrepreneurs are real, real, very, right? Most kids don't get to grow up to see anyone be an entrepreneur. Like, anyone that has nine to five, they complain about the job. But see, he's seeing you hustle, work hard, and he's seeing the benefits, right? I just think of that as be, that's more than valuable than any education get, any, even with Harvard or any kind of big car time to school. So... Uh, I just think he's got his big advantage, like this observing you. That's right. And again, he, you know, there's times when he, oh, dad, can we do this? I'm like, sorry, Gavin, I have to make tea. So he gets it. There have been times when he, I, you know, we brought him to the shop because I had him with me. I'm like, look, you want to be with daddy today? I got to go make tea for a couple hours. So he gets it. He sees the, the sacrifice. But he, you know, Gavin's seen the sacrifice for the past eight, well, you know, I would say since 13. I think he really started noticing it around eight or nine. You know, we, uh, um, you know, with the packaging and, and you know, even his mom, who used to drink the tea, doesn't drink it anymore for whatever reason. Um, but he gets it. You know, when I first came up with packaging, my new packaging, I gave him, because he drinks the tea, I gave him a box he used to take home. You know, I, that was also a shot at his mom. Like, yeah, hey, we're still moving, mom. You know, we're still doing it. But, um, yeah, he, he understands. I mean, he sees that, he sees the hard work that Melanie and myself put in, day, you know, day in and day out. Because, you know, I spend, I spend quite a bit of time with him. You know, I see him probably four or five days a week. Um, uh, you know, I, he, I, I just recently in the last four or five months got him into boxing. So, uh, cause I, I got, I have to put the time in with my boys. I mean, I, if I could spend eight hours at, at doing tea and four hours training, I got to put the lead, you know, spend the last two hours with, with my boys. Um, because, and, and, and if I didn't, you know, Evan, he, he requests that time. He needs to be around his dad. So, um, but uh, yeah, he, you know, Gavin, it, it's right now, it's a little early, early to tell, but, you know, I give it a few more years and maybe when he's maybe pushing, you know, his late teens, you know, see what he wants to do, because I would love to get him involved in it, you know, to carry, to carry the torch and, you know, to make sure financially that he's good, you know, after I'm gone. Um, but uh, it's a little too early to tell right now, but so he definitely notices, he definitely notices what we're doing. So, Mark, like, do, the, do this any talk where you talk about how being a you know entrepreneur is kind of hard, it's not easy. But there are some positives, right? Like, one positive is like, you know, like if your son or child has a baseball game two in the afternoon, you would probably take off some time and watch the game, right? Like, there are some yeah. advantages. There. Can you talk about some of the advantages of being an entrepreneur? Well, you know, believe, believe it or not, it, it's, it's, it's the reaction you get from the public, believe it or not. Not just being an entrepreneur, but now I can say it, being a black entrepreneur. Because when people say, you know, it's, I, I'm in a gym one time and, and I'm training, I'm doing my thing, but then I got my tea sitting up on the counter and people come like, oh, what's this? Oh, that's one of our clients, that's our uh, trainers, that's his tea. And they look at you like, okay, you're a trainer and you got this going on here. So it's, it's, a, it's a great label, but I'm past the point of just being labeled an entrepreneur. Now I want to live it. Now I want to make sure that we started something, I want to, I want to finish this through, you know, because I'm, um, like I said, it's, you know, my fam family members were like, I get the, I got this in the beginning. T, why are you doing tea? Even the trainer, you know, one of my a gentleman who makes supplements, who I used to buy supplements, I don't buy anymore. And I pitched my idea to him. I said, look, you know, I said, um, I got my tea. He looked at me, goes, 
why are you doing that? Why don't you open up your own gym? And, and that was my, believe it or not, that was my idea. That was my, uh, um, that's what I wanted to do about 10, 15 years ago was start my own gym. But I got sidetracked because after 2008, I saw how everyone struggled, you know, who, you know, former, former uh, trainers who I worked with at New York Sports Club all branched out to do their own thing, you know, gym here, a gym over here. And I'd say out of the eight guys who tried, only two are still st standing to this day and they're struggling. So, you know, that was something that I wanted to do at one point. And once I realized that I, you know, once I, you know, found Maury's high tea, I said, you know what? I don't want to struggle like that. I'd rather make this sacrifice here because this could be more profitable. Um, and again, like I said, with my two boys, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm 54 years old. I, I don't want to be a personal trainer at 65. I don't want to do that. You know, um, I'll be taking care of myself at that age, but you know, by that point, I don't, I don't care to be, you know, doing this work anymore. Um, I've been doing it for such a long, long time. And I, you know, I am exhausted. I am exhausted um, to the point to where um, I'm even debating not recertifying coming up and spend more time doing this. But, uh, you know, the, the, that entrepreneur label, it's, it, it meant something in the beginning, but now I, I got to pull this off first. It's past that point. That makes sense. So I'm, I'm um, in the thick of it right now, and and I, I have yeah, I have a ways to go. So, so Mari, you know, each day you have a lot to do, right? Yeah. Each day, how do you? What's your system for making sure you work on things one through five versus working on things no, number ninety five through ninety nine on your list? Right. Well, I have a routine. Um, you know, my I, my schedule as far as training, I I do that. I have a set schedule. The same people I train. So, I, and I'm not. Ta I haven't taken on. Well, that's not true. I took on a new client yesterday because he, needed, he begged, basically begged me for my help. <laughs> I couldn't tell him no, but um, I have a set schedule and, you know, um, to the point to where, you know, like I said, we just, we're a three man team. So we all have our own responsibilities. So my responsibility other than my training is again, the face of the product, going out and meeting people. That's all scheduled. Then, you know, for instance, my son Gavin has boxing at three o'clock. I will go scoop him up take him to boxing, go do a session, because it's all, it's, I, it's all tangled in together, do a session for you know 40 minutes, 45 minutes, go grab him, drop him back off at his house, come back, if it's tea that needs to be made or uh, tea that needs to be delivered or me going to work out, I have a schedule. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Everything, it, that's another thing. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you have to have a set schedule. And you know, Melanie should always say to me, write everything down, write everything in, right? Every, I used to never listen to her. And finally, when I started doing Great it, advice. sure enough, sure enough, sure enough, things started coming into play, you know? And, and that was, because, you know, when you're young and you're moving, things are moving, oh, I got this, I got this. Oh, you were meeting here, meeting there, in my head, all of a sudden I started forgetting things. And I said, you know what? No, this is not working. Then I, I told you, write things down and, and plan everything out. So that's what I do now. So you, you, it's, you have to be able to juggle, juggle, I mean, again, now, there are times your, your schedule can get thrown off, like, for instance, Tyler, if he has a situation where it's a school or he falls and bumps his head or he has a seizure, well, everything's out the door. And now he's, he gets all my attention because just, that's just the way it is. But Melanie's aware of that. Greg's aware of that. You know, my clients are aware of that. So there's no issue with that. You know, it doesn't happen often. Not, uh, um, few and far between now as opposed to when he was younger. But uh, you know now it's 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 scheduling and and I have my moments where I am stressed out, but that's why I work out, Jason. Because when I go to the gym, it releases all of that. You know, um, I and my workouts are not your average workouts. <laughs> you know, I, 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 can, I can there. imagine you lifting a yeah, lot of I don't, crap in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not even about lifting heavy stuff anymore. It's more it's being you got to be smart. I mean, I'm 54. I got to be smart about it these days. You know, I have a lot of lingering injuries from all the heavy lifting in the past that I regret. But now I do things smarter. You know, I lift, you know, I take better care of myself. I make sure my form is good. You know, I love kettlebells. That is my, oh, if I could pick one, just one piece of equipment to use, it'll be a kettlebell, you know, because you sit me on an island, you can do everything with that thing. So, um, and I pass that on to my clients. Uh, but again, it's, 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 you know, I, I, and I have quite a few stressful days. Mel can, Mel can attach to that, uh, attest to that. But again, once I hit the gym, those, you know, those, that adrenaline flows, like those endorphins moving, it literally brings me down. It's almost instant. 
and then I, I set, re, hit that reset button, I'm on to the next day. So it's great. It's good. It's good. But you got to, but you need a plan to do that. You know, you need something to fall back on because in being an, being an entrepreneur, you're going to have a, a ton of stress and you need a way to release that stress. So. Maury, so you talk a lot of, you talked a lot about your, your, your people, Greg and Melanie. Can you talk about how, like, how they came, came to you? Like, were you friends of the past? Or how do, you, how, do, how, how, how do you convince them, quote, unquote, to come help you out? Well, it's funny. I met Melanie through a client um, that I trained. Um, she was a nanny years ago, and I met her. And then it's funny because um, it was when I left the gym, and I said, you know, let's go. Then I started training her. Um, and I said, look, I said, um, no, I have to get this wrong. I, so I trained Melanie years ago, and then I trained a client, and then... I started training her again. Um, I said, look, I said, I, we came up with this really good idea. I said, call, um, um, with tea and honey. Well, she jumped on the computer, started, I think Melly was the first one to start looking for um, the granulated honey. She was the one who found it. It was, they found out that there was a, um, a, um, a market for it. So that's how we started, we started going back and forth and that. And then before you know it, she was my go-to person to just talk about tea other than my mentor. So when it was time to, you know, start looking for um, uh, certain teas and, you know, searching out granules, that was all me and her. Now we would take the time out and she, we, she, um, she worked, she was a nanny, so she worked at a, a nice house and it had a nice kitchen. That was our office. <laughs> you know, we set up scale and we set up shop there and we would, and the owners were fine. They were, they loved it. They were like, oh, I like your idea. And that. So in fact, that we started making tea in her house on the, on the big, those big island counters, that's how we started. That's when we started mass producing. We started making it by hand. That's how I got it out there. Not machines or anything, it was by hand. We would put it in, measure it out, seal it up, and that was a process. And then, you know, it just, you know, she, she stayed with me from there. And I stopped, you know, I didn't reach out because I didn't want too many people to know what I was doing at the time because I was so afraid of someone stealing my idea. So I kept it, you know, close knit between the two of us and my part and my mentor. And she just helped me grow the business slowly. She helped me, you know, she helped me um, apply for my first um, business license. Um, uh, and Ty was born, and you know, she um, we, the situation with him with his his, uh, his uh, epilepsy. I would take time off. I'm like, I would, I would literally like get scared. She goes, "Oh, don't worry about it. I got it. I'll take care of it. Don't you worry about it. Do what you need to do." And then that kind of set in. And then we just kind of went on cruise patrol and started building the product, building the brand. And then um, about two years ago, um, another client, that's how I met, I met uh, Greg through another client. She said to me, she goes, look, she goes, I want to give you a heads up. She goes, if you really want to do this, I can introduce you to some people, but you're going to have to give up a pretty penny if you want. You know, of course, I went home like, oh, I don't, how much am I going to have to give up? Then I met Greg for the first time. I, saw, I literally sold him in 10 minutes. I poured him a cup of tea. I told him where we were. I showed him the business plan really quick. Smart guy. Uh, he goes, I mean, he didn't wait. He goes, okay, okay. I'm going to talk. I'm going to, you know, pitch this to some, some people at my office and I'll get back to you. Now, even a week later, um, I had uh, five or f four, four or five additional new investors. That's how it worked out. Um, and uh, Greg took over. He became the uh, CFA for the, for the company. Uh, he handled all the money. Um, he, he did all, took all care of all the social media. That was all Greg. He did a wonderful job. And, uh, you know, I thank him for that to this day because, you know, the guy is, he, he knows, he, he, listen, he, he's a geek. <laughs> I hope you're not listening, Greg, but he's kind of a geek, you know what I mean? But hey, he's a smart as hell geek. And again, he, 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 he took us to another level. I, owe, I definitely owe him for that. You know? um, but uh, again, that being said, we still have a lot of work to do, so. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're still here. We're not going anywhere, Jason. We're, we're on our way. Mari, does tea have a shelf life? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But for the, for retail storage, you have to put a year on it. Okay. But no, the, the granulated honey has a two year shelf life, but the tea does not. The, in fact, the, 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 dry, the longer that tea sits, the better it is. We all know this, but the, you know, when you deal with retail storage, you have to put an expiration date on it. Um, so tea doesn't go bad. No. So, how long does it, it take? Properly stored. Yeah. How long does it take for tea to grow? Like when somebody, I mean, I have no idea if they grow on trees or plants. I have no idea how that works. But when, when a tea is planted, how long does it, does it take for it to become like ready to like harvest or whatever? Well, you know, it's funny. I don't know the full detail, but from my from the little understanding that I have, it takes quite a bit because you have to. It's like 
well, guys don't use marijuana as a as a <laughs> as a, <laughs> as a, as a as an example. Right. But you know, you have to you have to you have to groom it, you have to snip it as it grows. And I think it's up to maybe a year, okay. maybe less, but it but it also has to be grown in a certain kind of environment too, though. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's why you don't see you don't see a lot of tea grown in the States. It's mostly grown in those hot countries, hot areas where it's hot, hot. So um I don't in fact I don't know of any tea being fully grown in the United States. I know there are companies that sell it, but they get it from these, you know, they get it from uh, either India or or Africa, you know, places that sell it. But um, it's a process, just like anything else. And the only reason I know about the marijuana is because uh, because I took a course years ago about um, how to grow it. Because I thought I was going to get into that business, but I guess I did. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I'm in the state of Washington, so marijuana growing is a big, big, booming business up here. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Connecticut, Connecticut, New York, they're catching on now because it's legal in it's legal in illegal in Connecticut. And I think they're fin- doing the finishing touches in New York as well. So. I think it's just a matter of time for that's going to be legalized everywhere. Yeah, it's going to be legal uh, federal, federal, fairly pretty soon, too, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this has been a great talk. Is there anything that I did not ask you or anything else you want to talk about that we have not covered yet? No, no, but I do, I do want to say to people, listen, we're in tough times right now. And I to, to people who are looking to even think about starting your own business, starting you guys and gals give it a shot you gotta give it a shot because you know i don't see this country getting better as far as you know people being able to make a good living you know i've i've you know i grew up in the in the, in the 80s where you know, the, you know i remember when the country was thriving and you know the things were great and, and the world was it's a different time now and you know ever since the economy tanked in 09 and then you got the pandemic how and that exposed a lot of our country i think for people who are looking to really to 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 do something different, and you have if you have an idea, guys, even if it's an idea, take a hard look at it. You know, you got to try it because, you know, I'm I'm scared I'm scared to death of where this country is going in the next ten you know fifteen years. I, you know, I I do worry about my kids because of that, but that's why I'm trying to grow a good financial foundation for them as well. But to those out there who are looking to who are you know caught in between, you know, a lot of people not going back to work. Because it, you know, they feel that you know they've been taken advantage of long enough, and they're looking, to, you know, do something different. God, I mean, it, listen, at, whether it be an app, whether it be whatever, give it a shot, guys. You got to give it a shot because there's so much stuff out there that has that's so un, that has not been tapped into yet. You know, um, like I said, I have other ideas. I just hope they don't steal those ideas, get to those ideas before I do. But you know, you got to think, put your thinking cap on. You know, get a group of people together and friends, family, come up with ideas to 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 try to you know. To, to come up with something to, to, you know, put your name on or it's it, because again, like I said, I'm scared because I don't know where this country's going in the next 10 years. So, um, um, you know, like I said, the poor, the richer are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. And, you know, I, you know, it's, it's a lot to think about. Um, but if you have that idea, guys, go for it, give it a shot. Just what do you have to lose at this point? You know, and then, but that being said, you know, give it a shot, but be prepared to put, you know, put your blood, sweat, and tears into it because it's not going to grow by itself, period. You may have a great idea, but, you know, it's not, you know, word of mouth, get out there, you know, get put together flyers and stick them everywhere if you have to, just to, you know, get the name out there. But it's, you know, for me, it's, I want people to, and again, in particular, people of color, you know, um, Maury, Maury's High Tea is, is doing it. And, you know, to those people who are, who are waiting for us to, you know, to get it done, be a little bit more patient because, if I can pull this off, I'm coming back to get those guys and gals to help them get their business. And again, it'll be a good, great way to invest my, you know, my 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 company into new companies as well. So to help me grow my, because I hey, I want to be enterprise. You know, my my company name is Namtip, which is my Pitman, my last name spelled backwards. So um, when you see that, you know we're doing it. You know, when you see the Namtip logo, you know that uh that we're growing, that we're growing. So. Um, but again, to those out there who are looking to grow their business, uh, to start a business, to grow a business, listen, you know, take the time and think it out, you know, do that, put together a, a well thought out business plan. Um, although I say business plans are, don't get me wrong now, guys, business plans are not, you don't follow business, a business plan to the T. Basically what it does, it just gives you or say, you know, you know um, investors an idea as to where you want to take your company, where you, how you want to grow your business. So um, those two, three, four, eight, uh, five, ten page business plans may not work, you know, get someone to help you do it. You know, like I said, uh, it's make sure they're well thought out and, you know, put, and um, 
make sure that uh, that also that your business, that the thing that you, you're you're trying to put out there is, is protected. You know, make sure you know because there's so many people out there trying to you know get ahead and and and, and copycat and, and you know, the word we say is bite off of what you're doing. Um, so you know, just handle your business, handle all your your your, your paperwork, your your all your licenses and and your know, certifications. Make sure everything up to par, up to par. And again, guys. It's a lot of work to the point where it can turn you off and turn you and put you in a different direction. But it, 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 are you happy with where you are right now? What are you willing to do to pick yourself up and, and, and put yourself in a different situation? You know, so it's got to be well thought out and give it a shot. So, Mari, can you share your social media links for yourself and your company so people can reach out to you? Yes, sir. Well, I mean, you can go to Maury's Hive, Maury's Hive Tea. And we, you link to all the social media, you know, get to Facebook, LinkedIn, we got our Instagram, um, uh, 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 Facebook. Uh, uh, so yeah, we're, we're out there, but if you need to, you can go check out our website, maurishightea.com. Um, and then you can click on any link uh, for, for social media if you want to uh, post. You can even go out to our website and you know, check it out. And uh, if, you, if you've tried our tea, hey, put, give a testimonial, play devil's advocate. Let us know if you like it if you don't, you know, but uh, so far, you know, it's been good. We haven't gotten any negative feedback yet. So, but uh, yeah, you can check us out on uh, all the major, all the major social media platforms. And like I said, but we're growing. And if you haven't heard of us yet, guys, or you haven't seen us near you, we'll be there soon. So, And, and for our listeners, we'll have the links to all the social media on the show notes. You can find the show notes at www.kevinshallblog.com. And also as a reminder here at Kevin's HR, we're getting really ready to release our Kevin's HR MVP for our HR platform. And we're currently keeping, Sign up people for a wait list and we'll, you will give you three months of free HR and lock you into a better pricing for life. And you sign up for the wait list at www.cavernshr.co. Um, so Mari, this is a great talk. I really appreciate you. Uh, do you have any, any, any last minute wisdom or advice or anything you want to talk about? Well, like I said, um, you know, to those who are out there trying to get your own, and that, like I said, I'm really big on this guys because this pandemic really caught a lot of people off guard, but it also expo exposed our country for what we thought it was and it isn't. So again, if you're looking to, like I said, look, you know, looking for a way to get to, to start your own business or to, you know, to even look for ways to invest in other companies, guys, get out there and do your research, you know, because again, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fall on your lap, that's for sure. And I also want to bring up, um, I just want to circle back to um, this conversation. I want to somehow come to you and give out some free tea if we can. Um, I can link with you and maybe um, you can do a little contest. Um, and more, we can give out uh, two boxes or four boxes each, maybe eight to ten different people just to try it out. Um, we can talk about yes. that, but um, I, I want you listen. I've tried it, tea guys. If you're a tea drinker, give it a shot. Guaranteed, you're gonna like it. If you don't like it, we will give. Well, if it's free, then no, no money back. But if you go to purchase it and you, and you don't and you don't like it, that, that, that's you, a hell of a guarantee. Like you get money back even if it's free. <laughs> if you give it to you, right. So well, I, again, we can talk about this, you know, um, behind the scenes, but uh, I want to thank you for having us. Um, my, this is my very first podcast, so probably one of many. Uh, so I'm, it's a learning curve for me. So I really thank you, Jason, for having us on. And, um, you know, uh, maybe we can do this again sometime soon. Yes, definitely. Okay. Mario, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having us. And, um, hey, more is IT's coming, guys. You better believe it. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. Remember to be great every day. Thanks, Jason.